and you're hitting the streets. You're, you know, you're doing the ground and pound right out of the gate. Like, what's the origin of that? Why, why do you think you were the way you were? I mean, I think it. There's that one book that John Morgan wrote. You can't teach hungry. And I remember reading it back in the day, and Brian Panch actually gave me a copy, and um, he said, "You need to read this book." This is a long time ago, and I remember reading. Said, "Shit, this resonates with me because, like, you either have this insatiable appetite or you don't." And I think it's something that that you you grow you grow up with a chip on your shoulder, or you grow up that you have something to prove, right? And I came from a very working class family you know, public high school. And I always felt like we could do better. Like it, I always wanted to start companies, do things with my family to work together. My dream is to have this massive compound. Where we're all together and hanging out all the time, whatever. Not the Michael Jackson compound, but you know, I could take Neverland and turn into something good. Um, but I digress. But it was always like, dude, like I could do better than this. Um, I always wanted to take care of my family. That was always a big driving force for me, even to this day. Like I will not stop pushing forward until all of my family significantly taken care of because everybody either we all work together at my law firm or work together at Justice mm -hmm. HQ. And that's a big driving force for me. It's like until we can all have it. So everybody, not just me, but every single member of my family have independent financial success and that qualify different things for different people. Mine means if you can be so financially independent that you can have stress-free free time with your family as often as possible, then you've made it. It doesn't matter if that's a a few million, a few hundred thousand, a few billion. If you can do that and do it well, you've won. So that's it. I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but when you think about all this, right? Because you, you think about the Simon Law Group, you've got the family together. Family's obviously very important to you. But then you look at the other things that you're involved with between Justice HQ, Law de Gras, and so on. Uh, you, you love creating communities. You love bringing people together. Have you, have you thought about kind of the parallels between all those? You know what? I never did, but I think you're, I mean, shit, I never thought of it like that. But look, I think that's true. Like I always, <laughs> I try to make everybody around me very successful, like almost to a fault. Like sometimes my wife's like, why do you help all these people out? I was like, well, I just, they're friends of mine. Like I want their businesses to succeed. And sometimes I joke around. I was like, I just want other people to, you know, be able to afford the fucking vacations we take and go together, right? Rather not have to pay for them anymore. But I really like helping all of my circle of friends intertwine all my other circle of friends, professional, like all my best friends, we all work together at our firm. All this, all the lawyers we work with, um, we all live close to each other. We hang out constantly. We all have little kids. I mean, we're together all the time, but all the people, my friend are my best friends. If you had asked me my best friend, there's probably like 40 I would list, but yeah, I mean, same thing with Lottie Gras, same thing with Just HQ is I just like to help the best people come together and have the most fun. And we have this one, like I made up this one phrase called no crooks, no creeps, because I think if you get those people out of your life, people that are like sucks on your time, your drain and just bad people to be around, you'll just be a happier person. So if you have communities around you that don't, that don't strive off of those things, then you'll be cool.